a concept that is commonly acted on in the realm of business is you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Uh, this is Barry Phillips, a 10 minute tour, day three of Kitavo, when you come in. And we are in chapter 26, Deuteronomy chapter 26, still. Let's drop down to verse 17. Yah says, You have today caused Yahweh to proclaim to be your Elohim and to walk in his ways, guard his laws and his commands and his right rulings, and to obey his voice. Yahweh has caused you to proclaim today to be his people, a treasure possession, as he has spoken to you and to guard all of his commands, so as to set you high above all nations which he has made for a praise and for a name and for esteem, and for you to be a set-apart people to Yahweh your Elohim, as he has spoken. Our relationship with Yah. <clears throat> Sometimes we have this common business mindset of, okay, if I check all the boxes, and I do all that I think you require of me, Father, then I need you to do all that I'm expecting you to do for me and check all my boxes. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. I do what you want, you do what I want. Well, that's not a righteous mindset in our relationship with Yah. We are to serve Him and to obey Him regardless, whether circumstances are good or bad. In other words, there needs to be a management of expectation to some degree. Uh, I studied a number of years ago about an ideal of marriage, and that is that one of the most commonly um, acknowledged contributing factors to a marriage that is in trouble is unrealized expectations. I'll give you a case in point. Young couple gets married, even an older couple, a new couple, they get married, and in the minds of both bride and bridegroom, there are these expectations of how life is going to be after the ceremony and whatever wedding trip is planned. You come to the residence, wherever that may be, and life begins. Uh, it's the common work week, perhaps. It's the routine of things, and, and life just has merged. The expectations that one might have of their spouse and what life is going to be has to become flexible. If it's rigid, you're not doing what I expect you to do. This is not what I anticipated. I didn't sign up for this. Living with someone in a new and covenant relationship, holding on firmly to whatever our expectations are, is a recipe for disaster. Fights, squabbles, hurt feelings, angers, tantrums, so forth. And we we began this process of massaging, molding, urging, compelling, demanding that someone you have professed love and enduring life, uh, long love for, is going to do what you want. And that comes down to manipulation and control. That's not love. So we have to learn to... To manage our expectations, the old adage is, well, you know, both sides needs to give a little. There has to be a common goal that both sides are willing to work toward. Ah, so now we come to our righteous expectations of Yah. We, we come into perhaps a redeemed relationship with Him based on whatever life experience we had at that particular time in our life. Maybe everything was falling apart, and in your desperation, you reached up like Shimon Kepha, Simon Peter, out of the depths of the waters. Master, save me. Maybe everything was well, but you just were not happy, and there was no shalom, no well-being inside, and you were looking for the missing component. 
Maybe you followed someone else's example and saw that there was a joy and you went for it as well. However it happened, when you enter into this covenant relationship, it's, again, based on expectations. It is a fallacy and erroneous to teach people in whatever uh, sermon context that you're presenting you give your life to Messiah and he will fix it all and life will be well. That's rarely the case. Uh, some people get born again and instantly bad habits and life uh, struggles are, are corrected and chains fall off and bondages and habits and addictions, they break and you're just gloriously not only redeemed but renewed and just life is over. Uh, over the heels, uh, just wonderful. That's not often the case. Most people have to learn to apply the word and with prayer and with counsel and with guidance, break through the stuff that shapes their life. Here we read how that he said that we're told you're going to come in, you're going to rehearse your family history, you're going to present your offerings of first fruits. You're going to acknowledge, Yah, I have not put my hands to that which is set apart and holy unto you. I didn't eat of my first fruits. I didn't just dip in and take a little for myself. What I have decreed belongs to you. It is yours in its entirety. I didn't stick my hand in the cookie jar here. I've been faithful to you. And I've kept your commands. And I brought this and I presented it to the priest as you have commanded me. And Moshe says, now Yah says to you, because you have done this, because you acknowledge where you have come from and where your blessed place now is, and because you have not put your hands to that which is set apart to take it for yourself, but what is set apart belongs to him. That means that someone's got to teach you what is common and uncommon what is clean and unclean, what is set apart and what is ordinary. And once we learn these things, it's a process of our maturity. We acknowledge, Yah, what belongs to you, I did not take for myself. When we were born again, more than likely, we prayed something along the lines of, Father, my life, I give it to you. It is no longer mine, but you take it and you live your life in me. Uh, Rav Shaul, the Apostle Paul, I believe in, if I can remember this, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Messiah, and yet I live, yet not I, but it is now Messiah who lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by belief in him who loved me and gave himself for me. Really? If that is the case, if we've given our lives to him, then we cannot reach and say, well, I gave it to you, but I'm going to take this back from me. I'm going to do what I want to do. We get these mindsets sometimes. I'm just going to live my life. I'm tired of people telling me what to do. And I'm old enough that I can just make a choice and do my own thing. No. If we gave our lives to Messiah, Yeshua is the master of our living. He is our master, our king, our sovereign one, and we live our lives submitting to him. And so it's not, well, I'm going to do what I want to do, but master, what would you have me to do for you today? He says, because you have caused Yah to be your Elohim and you've been willing to walk in his commandments, that Yah has caused you to proclaim today to be his people. You're no longer an ordinary Joe. You're not just a usual, casual, regular person. You're a set-apart and treasured possession. And he says, I will set you high above all the nations. And your name is going to be praiseworthy. You're going to have a name of esteem. I'm going to cause you to become a set-apart people that will bring honor and glory to me. Is there any higher living? Is there any greater purpose? 
Think on these things, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Until then, shalom. Thank you.